What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another Transfer Daily video for you guys today. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Sergio Reguilon. I really hope I pronounced that name correct me correctly. Let me know if I didn't down in the comment section below because I know I have a really bad track record when it comes to announcing new signings names or potential new signings. We're also going to be talking about Saeed Ben Rama and the potential drop in transfer value after the loss to Fulham in the playoff finals. And we're also going to be talking about a progression in the Willian to Arsenal contract talks. Obviously, I want to say before I start any any of this transfer content, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe to Blues Fans TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G as well. Don't forget to press the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever I release any content. And please smash that subscribe button as well. Let's go straight into the transfer talk. We're going to start with Sergio Regulon, who is another left back that we have been linked with in the search for a good left back at also a pretty cheap price with the understanding of the last couple days that we have to sell in order to buy when it comes to our centre backs and our left backs after our pursuit of the Kai Havertz transfer. We know that one left back is going to be leaving in the summer, we know that one centre back is going to be leaving in the summer as well and we're trying to look for a set at, for a left back at a cheap price. We know that Ben Chilwell is a possibility and as I said in my last video with Beyond the 90 LCFC, Chilwell does look very likely and there's a lot of little things that have gone under the radar to hint that Chilwell to Chelsea is looking more likely than Chilwell going to any other club. But there are still other options that we can look at. We've, we've been looking at Tagliafico for a while. We've been looking at Alex Tellez as well. And another name's popped up recently and that's Sergio Regulon. He's the same age as Ben Chilwell. Literally a five-day difference between both. And has experience in the top league. But he's been very good for them this season. And he's even though he hasn't been their starting left back behind Marcello and Furlan Mendy, which also could make it a bit of a benefit to us in terms of transfer fee. I'm hearing Real Madrid probably would sell for 30 million. Maybe even we could push to around 2025. I'm not so sure. All depends on if Marina can work on magic. And statistically, compared to Ben Chilwell, he looks slightly better. It's, it's very even between both of them, but uh, Regulon always seems to have the slightly better stats other than aerial stats. Chilwell does have the better of him aerially, but going forward and defensively as well, Statistically, he does look just slightly better than Ben Chilwell. And you also got to take into account how much Ben Chilwell could cost. People are saying 80 million. Uh, what's his name? Neil from Beyond the 90s saying it could go for about 40 to 60 million. But for that sort of price tag, again, you want the finished product. And Regulon's coming at half the price. And statistically, he does look a little bit better. You do have to take into account adapting a new league into the play. Like, let's be honest, Emerson statistically was better than Alonso before he joined us. And he hasn't really looked that much better throughout his time during his spell at Chelsea. So you have to take the eye test into consideration. You also have to take adapting into a new league into consideration as well. But... All I care about is the transfer fee at this point because we now know that we have to sell in order to buy and in order to do that we need to be more smart with our signings. I think a centre back matters, Not maybe not a centre back as more but a goalkeeper definitely matters more than a left back or a centre back to us and I've been saying if we can really push for Jan Oblak, which I do think we can if we have the balls for it, we should do it because getting a goalkeeper of that sort of quality instantly turns you into title contenders and instantly turns you into match winners look at De Gea's performances when he was saving Manchester United week in and week out a couple of seasons ago yes it's not the same right now but it's the same sort of impact that Jan Oblak could bring to us and if you've got someone who's that world class on the table for you guys 120 million and you can put Kepa in there as well try and lower the transfer fee a little bit too Bruv, I'd do it. It's it's a shoe-in. You have to do it. Uh, we'll move into the next piece of news, and that is William to Arsenal. We've been reporting on this one for the last couple of days. And ESPN have reported that Arsenal and William have agreed a three-year, 100k a week contract. And we know that Chelsea and William have been struggling to agree terms on a new deal all season. And I've already said in previous videos, I'm glad we didn't give him to those demands because three years are the same sort of wages that we were giving him doesn't make sense in the long term for us especially if we're trying to push for a new era of young players we need to get rid of the older wingers in our squad and that's all we're doing with getting rid of William and Pedro William's also on 120k a week Pedro's on 100k a week and that frees up the wage bill for us personally so that's a good move for us and it's a good move for both for both William and Chelsea if he's getting that sort of deal at Arsenal as well that contract from Arsenal would make William the joint fifth highest Arsenal player on the team 
under the likes of Meza Ozil, Aubameyang and I think Xhaka as well. Morally doesn't look the smartest after 55 Arsenal workers were given the sack so Ozil could get another screen to play Fortnite. But it is what it is and also Aubameyang getting a 300k extension. But from the Chelsea point of view, it works for us. It frees up the wage bill and it also allows us to go and search for more potential depth signings. And that is going to move me on to the next topic and that is Saeed Benrahma. William and Pedro leaving is going to free up wages for Chelsea to try and buy more players to improve the depth of our squad. And Saeed Ben Rama has been a name that we've been seriously linked with. And with Brentford losing the playoff finals to Fulham a couple of days ago, his transfer fee will have significantly dropped. Potentially. In the case of Brentford, you do have to be honest as well and say they are now really going to have to keep a hold of their best assets. But I think they would have had a better chance of doing that as a Premier League side. And I think now that they aren't going to, they aren't going to be doing that, they're going to be playing the Championship yet again. They're going to have to lose one of their assets. And it's going to be one of Watkins or Ben Rama. And I think there's more clubs in for Ben Rama. I know Arsenal are in for them as well. I don't really know how far they're going to be into them with their transfer budget after Williams' wages. But it is what it is. I've heard a couple of other Premier League clubs are also interested in, in him. And for Chelsea, it's more than icing on the cake sort of transfer. Because he is going to be a transfer that improves our depth. But... I personally think he'd be, he'd be great to challenge Ziyech and Pulisic for their positions because that's something that Chelsea have lacked in the last few years and that's been strength in depth. A huge reason for that is that awful transfer window back in 2017 after we won the Premier League where we literally took one step forward and about four steps back. In fact, it literally was four steps back because we finished fifth. So... But we're still trying to recover from that. And now we're trying to clear the deadwood. We've been doing that for the last couple seasons. We saw a couple players leave under Maurizio Sarri. We saw a couple players leave initially under Frank Lampard as well. This season, though, it seems like we're really starting to push out the players that do look like deadwood to us. And me and Ian did a video on that that's going to be out on his channel in the next couple of days. So if you haven't looked, looked for that, check that one out as well. But there are going to be a couple of players leaving Chelsea because we do have to sell to buy at this point. Roman's money isn't just going to keep pissing itself out in front of all the competition. There is a tipping point and there are going to be a few players that have to leave. Kepa's been rumoured that he has to go and for the right price and like I also said, if it's potential in the Yano Black deal and it gives them a goalkeeper as well, I'd take it. We're also apparently in for uh, Jimenez as well from Atletico Madrid and honestly a good experienced defender who's worked for years under Diego Simeone, it'd be a great deal for us. But we, but we do have to be honest, we are going to be losing a couple of players. Jorginho has also been rumoured to be up for sale and honestly when it comes to Jorginho, he's a great player in the right sort of system and under Frank Lampard he's been in a completely different system and especially post lockdown, he just looks exposed, it doesn't look like the same sort of player. I don't think his head's gone, I will say that. I think he's been very professional throughout lockdown, especially through that period where he's been benched. But I think Billy Gilmore, as soon as he came on the scene, everyone was saying, OK, Jorginho's role looks a bit in danger because he looks like Jorginho, just a bit more athletic and, do a bit, and can do a bit more going forward and has a little bit better end product as well and has a much higher ceiling. So Billy Gilmore, I think I thought Jorginho's career was initially saved based off Billy Gilmore's injury, but... Jorginho's form since then he's been decent when we were trying to see games out but when we we're actually trying to push games forward bar that Manchester United FA Cup semi-final game he hasn't really had a decent game so I know he's going to be going as well William and Pedro are going to be going as well all this will do is free up the wage bill and help us potentially be able to get more signings that can increase the overall depth for our squad because that's what we're going to need if we're going to be serious title challengers next season but guys this is the end of the video let me know if you guys agree or disagree with any of the points that I made down in the comment section below don't forget to like and subscribe to carefree lewis g and we'll see you guys very very soon take care and up the chills